Okay, our topic is inclusive mobility as one of urban growth and strategies for sustainable development in human settlements. Our course objective is uh, to, uh, to provide participants an overview of the urban planning process to achieve sustainable inclusive development in human settlements and the, and the role of mobility for sustainable development and to learn more about the urban growth strategies on inclusive mobility approaches to achieve this. Uh, by 2050, more than 70% of the global population shall live in urban cities. It's a necessary trend to move people up to middle class. No? We can see that the difference in Metro Manila is uh, we are actually 73% higher in GDP per capita versus general average. So if we want inclusive growth and inclusive, inclusive development, we need, it's a necessary thing that we should drive into urbanization for the rest of the country. And, and therefore, Metro Manila is, 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 uh, becomes the seed. Now we start in get into Med Mega Manila. Then we can get into the other very, very progressive cities right now like Davao, Cebu, Iloilo. And of course, Clark is coming out, Pampanga and Tarlac as well. For the world's urban population, actually today, there's 3.3 billion. And by 2030, it's going to be 5 billion. So it starts, you know, it, it starts with only 30% 60 years ago. 30% are cities 60 years ago. Now it's... it's it's, uh, it's more than half, and by 2030, it's going to be 60%, and again, by, by 2050, it's, it's 70%. Now, if you look at the, whole, uh, the, the circles here, you will see that Philippines is a very important player in the future, especially by 2050, where 55% of, uh, of, uh, of, of, uh, of the population is actually going to be urban, and 64% is actually the contribution of GDP. So that's how important cities is over time, no? So if we do things properly, we are going to be a very uh, is a key, we're going to be a key player globally. So we need to do things right, no? So the demand bucket kasi nandito ang population, we are a very young population, 35% are young. The rest of the developed countries are aging, one-child policy, people don't want to have children, they're very busy. But here in the Philippines, despite poverty, we love to have children. But we need to make sure we create a very good future for everybody. So, uh, so therefore, we need the right projects to support that for, for, for individual and, and, and collective growth. So, um, Demographia.com also confirms the same trend. That's what Benji de la Peña says. We're the fifth in terms of uh, uh, being, being a very large urban agglomerate, uh, in terms of urban agglomeration. Um, we are the fifth after Japan. Japan, of course, is the, is the grandfather of all, ano, as, as Benji said. Mm -hmm. Then we have Jakarta, India, South Korea. Manila is actually mega Manila, 22.7 here in this figure. But uh, here's the implication. Uh, more than half of the population of large urban areas is in Asia. Number two, out of the 28 megacities identified, tumigil lang po ako sa sampo kasi baka hindi nyo na makita yung Manila eh. Uh, ten of, of, uh, when you say mega, mega cities, it's more than 10 million no? population. 17 of them are in Asia. So that's again more than 50%. Um, and uh, Mega Manila ranks fifth with huge implications. Anong ibig sabihin nun? A uh, trend implies that urbanization or urban population shall go faster in areas where there is still high population growth. We are still 2% every year, a uh, 1.8% Metro Manila, but 2.4% if you talk about Region 3 and 4A. Maybe third can also clarify with me some of the figures I'm saying. But, uh, but this puts further strain on our, on our vital resources. Not only the infrastructure budget, na pag-aagawan natin lahat, but also in terms of land, and competitive labor capital. So it, it puts a strain on all of us. No? Are, do we have the right, the right, uh, no, the right uh, skills that's needed globally, diba? So we need to develop that as well. And it also requires serious rethinking of public funding allocation. So we need to be wise. Ano ba yung priority natin ngayon? What's, what's going to be a higher impact in terms of, you know, with the time constraint of short term, medium term, and long term. So that, that's how we will want to influence minds and thinkers in this session. Um, so urban cities compared, um, uh, wag kayo masyado mabahala sa detalye, but what we're trying to do here is, I, I just borrowed some, uh, some, uh, some uh, simple illustrations, so hopefully simple illustrations of how residents live near their, where they work, no? And you can see here the example would be Hong Kong, New York City, London, Mexico City, Sao Paulo in Brazil, Shanghai, Istanbul, Mumbai, and Johannesburg in South Africa. So people from Hong Kong, here, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Mumbai, 
and New York City live closest to cities. Ibig sabihin, mas malalakad nila, mas madali, mas, mas konti lang ang gasa sila relative to everybody else. Cities. And you will notice, if you imagine them, these are actually fairly a very dynamic, these are fairly, fairly dynamic cities. London, this is how London looks like. Uh, may constraint ang London in terms of densification kasi mahal talaga ang lote ng London. No? But that's a deliberate strategy for them to be able to, to preserve the essence and the culture and the identity of, of London. So London is concerned by high value of real estate but combines density and sprawl well. Uh, but Sao Paulo is multi-centered. Where is Sao Paulo? It's multi-centered, same as Mexico. But if you really look into the street level, mas, mas, uh, mas dense... Um, uh, Sao Paulo is dominated by high-rise apartment blocks and Mexico is actually low-rise. Deceiving itong, itong illustration, but it means that there are actually more people living in flat, in flat houses. And so it still works, no? It still works at, at some, at, up to a certain point. So, jo, uh, Johans, so Johansburg has low residential density and sprawl. So it's medyo challenging and it's, it's similar to Metro Manila where it is now. So in terms of transport, uh, transport infrastructure drives urban form. How, 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 the, how the city is formed is driven by the availability or lack of transportation. So, so the public transport and the urban form, the economic development and the climate dictate how people travel. Um, you will see here that uh, Hong Kong, this is, uh, okay, to simplify, the darker colors that you see are those who are, you, who are traveling by car. Now, the semi-dark color, semi, are those who are using public transport. And the lightest would actually resort to walking. So, ano anong ibig sabihin yan? So, we see that, that Hong Kong, mas marami lumalakad. Mumbai, mas marami naglalakad. Mexico City is, is public transport uh, heavily laden. Ang pinakamagandang combination is actually, sino ba yung 30-30%? Okay, Sao Paulo. You have cars, you have public transport, and you have walking. One third, one third, one third. So it's all driven by the geographical or the urban form that, that, that is created in these cities. No? So Hong Kong, Hong Kong's younger, uh, uh, so Hong Kong uh, has a very young metro net network that expand, exp uh, no, expands to 250 kilometers of railway. No? Kaya ang ganda. Through 10 lines with further extensions connecting to new towns up to the CBD. So may new towns sila, similar to the grand plan of NEDA a while ago. There are new towns that connect to the CBD still. Ay, Central Business District of Hong Kong, Maine. So like Hong Kong, Mumbai and Istanbul are constrained by topography and have developed efficient and affordable public transport. Ang Sao Paulo naman and Mexico City are not geographically constrained but have allowed the car to dominate even though Mexico City's 177 kilometers of metro carries as many passengers as London. Pero ang Mexico, nagkokotse pa rin sila. Shanghai is investing heavily in metro and rail transport, while Johannesburg has insufficient public transport that relies heavily, as do Sao Paulo and Mexico City. On in, and, and because Johannesburg, Johannesburg, Johannesburg uh, has a whole lot of informal and unregulated collective taxis and minibus services. So maraming informalities that's going on there. But uh, you see that, uh, that uh, yung kaninang uh, residential density actually influences the way many people would walk or many people would take, take, take public transport. So in the end, mahirap gawin mag-isa ang maglakad unless we have that right infrastructure or the urban design or the urban form that shapes our behavior, the way we travel. So urban cities compared, ito medyo natagalan. I, I am sorry. Oh, okay, non-motorized. Okay, that's okay. We mentioned that. Um, what we're trying to say is that Metro Manila, okay, here's population. Here's area per kil in, in square kilometer. Per capita income for Metro Manila is 6000 versus 2000 average, $2,000. GDP contribution to national. Let me just highlight that amongst all these comparative cities of Hong Kong, New York, Sao Paulo, Shanghai, Mumbai, and Jakarta, Metro Manila contributes 36%. Not, not Mega Manila, but Metro Manila is 36%. So even the, the city, of course, Hong Kong is Hong Kong, no, standalone. But New York, Hong Kong for China, of course, is another estimate. It's another figure altogether. But New York, in, in how dynamic it is, it only contributes 3.3% to GDP. And uh, Sao Paulo is 12%, Shanghai is 5%, Mumbai is 3%, Jakarta is 20%. Kumuklose tayo sa Jakarta in terms of contribution. But look at how we are neglecting 
Metro Manila. Of course, this is a session about Metro Manila for now, no? Kaya may bias tayo to say that, you know, if you do things messed up all over again, the country is doomed to fail all over again. That's what we're trying to say here. So we need to do things right at this level to trigger an impetus for national growth. So the density per square kilometer is, is, is actually not as bad as Mumbai of 30,900 people, no? Uh, and and uh, Jakarta as 14,700. But I, I tell you, I've seen Shanghai going as high as, in kaninang napakita namin, the residential peak is 110,000 people over one square kilometer in Shanghai and in Hong Kong. So we are not as bad in terms of density. Hindi lang talaga tayo maayos sa Metro Manila. So, so 18,000. And then a rail network includes PNR, but other than that, we're only 54% of daily commuting rail, rail system, no? Compared to the very modern Hong Kong of 247 kilometers, New York's 579, Sao Paulo's 275, even if marami pa rin nagkukotse, Shanghai at 169, Mumbai 477, and Jakarta still 170, but I think they've, uh, 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 it, it's something that we have yet to confirm, no? Ito yung interesting, car ownership. Mahirap tayong bansa, pero marami may kotse per 1,000 people. Why? Again, because our urban form drove us to aspire to have a car. Dahil nga kalbaryo mag-commute, lahat ng savings natin napupunta sa pag-ipon ng kotse at pagbayad ng gasolina. And that, that puts a heavy strain even amongst middle class and, uh, and, and, and lower middle class, nakakainin talaga yung sweldo mo sa pagbayad ng kotse. At, at that, that's really a reality that we want to highlight here. We are not, according to Benji, is, you know, we, we probably don't know the problem. Maybe the solution will have to lie elsewhere, no? So, Hong Kong ownership sa pagkayaman-yaman na country is only 59 people own cars out of 1,000 people, no? New York, syempre, mayaman, 209. May combination, pero hindi gumagamit. Marami sa New York, may kotse, pero hindi na ginagamit pang araw-araw kasi napakamahal talaga mag-park at mag-park mag, mag, uh, mag, mag at mag-park, mag, uh, mag park, actually, mag-park doon at pumunta doon with traffic. And as, uh, I guess, I guess the, 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 the rest goes on, no? So Mumbai is on the right track, 36. Ang dami naglalakad kasi nga malapit sila sa kanilang pupuntahan. And the percentage of daily trips of walking and cycling, unfortunately, we don't have it. I hope we'd be able to pick up some figures there. But you see that Hong Kong spends most of their life, 45% walking. Sao Paulo is 34%. Shanghai is 54%. And 56% for Mumbai. Again, it's the urban form that, 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 that influences the way we move around our cities. So the model megacities of the world... Uh, we're not saying that model means they're perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect city. If you actually idolize Tokyo, there are also flaws there. If you idolize New York, there are also flaws there. So don't worry. We will have our own perfect or trying to be perfect Mega Manila after, you know, as, as we go along. There is no such thing as a perfect model to actually, uh, to actually get into. But it's good to get inspirations from snippets of, of little city stories like this model cities of the world or mega cities. Sao Paulo is 11.2 million population. Brazil is the richest uh, city. I'm sorry, Sao Paulo, uh, the richest city of Brazil and the most important financial center of Latin America. Young, it's young and ethnically diverse. So you can see similarities, get, get the inspiration from Metro Manila. Jakarta is a booming city post-2005 because they've gone through a lot of economic downfall and natural disasters. But like Manila, it also faces the challenge of traffic congestion. Right now, because they're pa sila. Magkaka Kaka BRT nila, meron pa sila mga kailangan pag-aralan pa. Hong, uh, again, sa baba tayo mamaya. Mumbai. Mumbai seems to be something that I also like to recommend uh, studying some more when we, start, when we understand Metro Manila. So Mumbai has a 12.5 million population. It's a commercial and movie capital. Alam natin yung mga, uh, ano yun? Uh, Bollywood. The Bollywood phenomenon of India is driven by Mumbai as a driver of key actors, actresses that, that, that gets India to be, mo, uh, to be global. And uh, it has attracted millions of migrants from the countryside. And over half of the population live in slums. And yet, and yet there's the beauty of, of the dynamics of, of Mumbai as it is now. But of course, with more opportunities for improvement. Shanghai has a 17.8 million population. It's the planet's largest city, largest in terms of uh, land as well as in uh, contribution, and China's financial commercial center. It has a major port area and an expensive, extensive bu bus system which has more than a thousand lines right now. 
And uh, of course, nandito tayo sa aspirational models of Hong Kong with, with only 7.1 million population. And it's an alpha plus financially, uh, financial commercial city along the ranks of London and New York. It's known for its expansive skyline and deep natural harbor. Lastly, New York City is 8.2 million. It's the only, Ameri the only city in America with more, more most households actually do not own a car. So urban travel mode shares. Uh, yellow is private, private uh, motorized transport. Red is non-motorized transport. And purple or blue is, purple, is public transport. So we are still, we are still uh, you know, the city is still, uh, cities that are, that are chosen here, unfortunately Manila is not there. Uh, the car use is still dominant, but, but the non-motorized transport use is catching up in cities. So that's a trend all over the world. So it's all right to start doing that and more of that in Metro Manila. And uh, there is strong use of non-motorized transport in Africa. There are like, I think, uh, several countries, there are like more than 11 over 20 are in Africa. And, but there is an opportunity to push public transport a as a viable alternative to car use, more than pushing more of making this yellow bigger. So Metro Manila now. Um, so Metro Manila, uh, okay, maybe you know this, but let's do it very, very fast. Metro Manila accounts for 27% of the country's motor vehicle registration. 90% are private vehicles. 210,000 motor vehicles were sold in 2013. 210 additional, 210,000 additional units were sold in 2013. We would wonder, si Ma'am Carol wouldn't even know where to put these cars on the street right now. Saan mo kaya ilalagay? Kaya marami tayong illegal parking at maraming condos kumakain na ng parking sa ating mga tabi-tabing tabi tabi lansangan. No? And, uh, and, uh, and that's up by 22% versus January to April 2014. No? And, and that and even, you know, if we read articles right now, very progressive, med medyo optimistic pa yung kanilang projection. And you will see, as we, we discussed last Friday, um, how much is a down payment for a brand new car right now? May 38 ka, nakarinig ako ng lowest at 65,000. And, and motorcycles, you can actually buy at 3,000 pesos no? as down payment. So you can imagine how, how systemic the problem will be if we don't provide alternative solutions. Yet close to 70%, pag pasensya na kayo, madilim pala sa screen, use public transportation. This is 69% to be exact. Ironically, 90% de koche, 70% gumagamit ng public transport, no? And 65% of air pollution comes from vehicles that's come, that comes from the EMB report. And uh, the GDP per capita is plus 70% of national average. So... Uh, there are many things do, doing well in Metro Manila, there, but there's so many systemic problems if we allow this all to happen and continue. Um, Metro Manila now, the economic loss due to traffic congestion is, is 2.2 trillion annual, and that, or that's 6 billion daily. The rise in townships and mixed-use developments cater only, unfortunately, to those who can afford. Uh, if you're talking about the inner city development, not ng condos ngayon, hindi naman talaga kaya na mga mahihirap. Kaya bakit ganun? Bakit... Uh, Bakit ang polisiya natin hindi sumusuporta ng affordable rental for, our, for, our, uh, for the majority of our brothers and sisters? And the low-income households, therefore, are pushed out of the housing market, leading to the proliferation, ergo, of, of some communities. Kasi wala silang pinupuntahan, eh, and therefore, that's how we behave informally, that's how we hate the city, that's how we dirty the city, because we are actually not recognizing the most important economy in our in, in metro money that's the informal economy with when benji says it's 10 trillion all over the world if you put the number to it it's important to actually quantify how potentially big their contribution is is if we actually allow them to formally be folded into the society and um so the average filipino spends i think i would argue here but i lack another figure to contest it the average filipino spends 10.7 percent of his income to transportation and um, I've heard uh, anecdotally, some of them would eat up 25% of their income to transport. I think it can even get worse uh, sa mga kapatid natin uh, na talagang mga iba hindi nga nakakapunta na opisina dahil walang pamasahe. Mga iba maghihiram pa ng pamasahe para sa araw yun kasi maghihiram pa sila kasi he, yung sweldo nila mamayang hapon pa. Nakakapos talaga sila. That's the reality that's happening. So the law of average can also be very deceiving because we are actually discounting, as Dr. Doy's principle says, we are actually discounting the majority of our brothers and sisters. So one out of 40, four households 
owns a car, uh, uh, a vehicle, and 55% own motorcycles. 55% of households own motorcycles. Can you imagine that? So, uh, so, and, and Metro Manila, as we say, why, why, why are we here? Because we're addressing the, the bottom of the pyramid, no? Um, Metro Manila is actually a place of economic extremes. So we are actually, we have very, very rich people here, but it's only 0.1%, no? We're talking about probably 10, you know, maybe 20 in our mga 20 apelido, alam natin kung sino sila. So, but household poverty incidence is 2.6% versus the national of 19.7. But wag natin ismoli ng 2.6% incidence of poverty because if you try to start translating that into absolute numbers, there's one point that that's equivalent to a 1.5 million population under extreme poverty. And NCR is about 50%, uh, 50% or or of our more than 3 million people live in slums without electricity, sanitation, and access to drinking water. And population density is extremely high in some areas. Some of them actually parang Hong Kong, pero sobrang devastating ang situation, no? 100,000 people live in, in one square kilometer. And that's actually specifically in Manila. So, uh, um, so why zero in on... on, on so, bakit, bakit transport... Bakit natin pre-knock out ang transport dito sa session na to? Uh, because transport is a catalyst for sustainable urban development. And uh, right now, we average 1.17 hours of travel one way from origin to destination per day. Lahat tayo, pinagkasya-kasya. But actually, the ones from Cavite, the ones who live in Bulacan would actually travel one way, three hours, two to three hours per day. Some of us wake up at 3.30 in the morning and prepare food for our children before we go to work. And still, when we ban the clock, we're late by 15 minutes. That's the reality that's happening sa baba. We cannot, we cannot accept. Therefore, they're not as productive as we want them to be. Therefore, they cannot learn as much or contribute much because na-exhaust na sila ng reality of transportation na kalbaryo talaga sa pagbebiyahe. Eh. So, if you, so now, with law of average again, 1.17 hours, uh, it will be worsened by 1.33 hours if you don't do anything, but do something means an average decrease by 43% of our, uh, uh, and then savings time will contribute to better productivity and enhance well-being. Public transport, it centralizes the economic functions and accommodate a growing population over resource constraints. No? So kung wala kang pambayad ng lupa, pwede ka actually bumili ng lupa basta for as long as sa public transport allows you to move around everywhere else into the inner core of target cities and create higher levels of accessibility for all. So integrated development along public transport corridors generates economic growth and increased income from property taxes. So pagka na-redefine bigla ang ano, na-unlock natin ng land value, ay actually tataas ang ating revenue in terms of government government revenue. Um, now, the green plan is, is actually, Metro Manila recognizes an being an, still an important player, um, we are actually recognizing the natural, the regional growth centers of uh, Batangas, Lipa, and Lucena, as well as Subic, Clark, and Tarlac sa taas, at supposed to be the plan of NEDA, uh, NEDA JICA approved by government, national government, is that uh, the, the urban expansion will happen in Bulacan and Cavite and Laguna, and that's where the housing and the new towns will be developed. The, so that's the, that's, the, the, that's the summary of that plan yung being video kanina. So plans are underway to boost infrastructure as the backbone of urban form. The urban form now will start, will get dictated again by, uh, by the onslaught of new infrastructure that will come our way. And therefore you have, you know, we have to decide the new gateway, airports and seaports. We have improved road networks and, and expressways, integrated urban mass transit network. Ito yung, if we do something, magiging green na, that's what we were talking about a while ago. And then, of course, the soft component, okay, then expressways and networks, kaya tayo nagbabaha ngayon kasi nagsasabay-sabay di mga infrastructure. And we're not blaming anything, it's just a reality that we have to contend with right now na lahat ng nangyayari ay kailangan din to boost, you know, to invest for the future. That's why we are actually the suffering generation, even suffering more. No, uh, from 2014 to 2016. And actually, the soft component is upgrading the traffic management system where you have capacity development, infrastructure, traffic safety, demand management, and pedestrianization. So there is a recognition of the inclusive mobility component at the NEDA. To be fair, it was recognized. In fact, they recognized non-motorized transport, lean vehicle, park, uh, uh, bicycle lanes, pedestrianization, um, and, and, and uh, you know, more innovative uh, technology coming coming all over the world is recognized as part of the plan as well. So, um, walking and biking, household... If we walk and bike, can you imagine how much savings you can make every day? Uh, that's the idea. Now, we therefore say that our expenses will be diverted to essentials like food, affordable housing, and education. And without green model solutions, car-hungry roads will dominate. That's exactly what's happening right now. 
and that, in, in, that means more sprawl, more congestion, more energy consumption, more air pollution, more diverted income, and poor health for the majority. We go back again to the question, why is urban transportation important? So Metro Manila can still be a model for sustainable urban mobility, choosing from the following urban forms. Let's go traditional neighborhoods. That's why we are here. We will go back and look at ano, from the lens of the people. Transit-oriented development, physical orientation towards public transportation. It will now drive, the, drive the, how, the, how people move around and how cities are formed. And car-restricted districts. Actually, maybe Makati potentially will be a car-restricted district over time. For as long as the public transport system is good and, and we can make it accessible, parking is limited, but it's actually very accessible for all. For increased density and better travel management. So change mindsets as well. Uh, ano, so if you look into the hierarchy, I, I, you probably have seen this before, but I want to emphasize all over again. The real hierarchy has to put our pedestrians above all because the city again, again, and again is all about people. No? So walking is the most important form of basic transportation. We have to drive that kind of culture where we are right now. And development should be people-centric and not car-centric. We need to push for seamless public transportation. Dito na tayo. With safe and convenient transfers. So transfer should be pleasant walking in between. Sila mamlalain dapat hindi kalbaryo tuwing lilipat from one sasakyan to another. The lifestyle shift for all income levels should should now welcome living in smaller dwellings that are close to school, work, recreation, and public transport para halos mawala na ang role ng, ng, ng motorized vehicles over time. And um, siguro, let's, let's skip the last slide. It's, uh, so, so um, ang mobility is just a means towards a greater, more noble purpose of transport is actually access. That's, uh, so we want to change the mindset that this is all about access. And it's not, mobility is just a means to how we want people to actually get to the places that they want. And that's exactly why we need to think of our PWDs, our pregnant women, our women with children, our senior citizens, our people who don't have money to move around. We need to really provide access to everybody. And, um, and Mark, thank you. Sige, this is just a longer sentence on, on, on access. Realization of accessibility is more important to, to influence, the, to influence uh, actually the, the, the human rights of our, of our citizens. No? Sige, sige, sir, then. So, focus on the human right to equitable access to destination and opportunities. So, nakita natin, kawawa talagang ating mga kapatid talagang nakipagsapalan sa mga sasakyan, no? And then, our, this is how our bus stations, bus terminals look like. This is a shot from Araneta Center years ago, ay, a, a couple of years ago. Next. Um, so, so, mobility is thus all about granting access to opportunities and empowering people to fully exercise their human rights. It's basic human rights. We forgot all about the people, eh? So, we just need to go back to that more, no? Next. And, um... And so therefore, we need to review the relationship with urban form and mobility and uh, support sustainable modes of transportation like public and non-motorized transport. Efficient and high-capacity public transport systems are the backbone of sustainable mobility. So here, um, a prerequisite, we need to have high-quality transport in infrastructure to drive transport policies. Minsan linear siya eh. So transport policies on land use, Systems, non-motorized transport, CNG, multi-vehicle tax system, transport facility improvements, HOV, high, high occupancy vehicles, eco-driving green car, transit-oriented development, park and ride. Those are policies that will influence the way we, the way, you know, which basically what happens when we do the infrastructure also. But, but on its own, we can also move things here, no? And that's the only time, perhaps, in most cases, can we even do demand management strategies? Like, uh, how do you plan your travel? How do you impose gasoline tax higher for motor vehicles? How do you now charge higher parking rates para hindi ka na lang magkotse dahil kakainin ka ng buhay ng 100 pesos per hour? Maybe we can start charging that already if the alternatives for car users are also there. So we need employee-based, uh, employer-based uh, travel demand management. Ang problema ngayon, most multinationals, the way to, 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 to recruit actually their top executives are a brand new car. There is something totally wrong there. In fact, all of us as yuppies would aspire to have our, to have our own car. And that, that, that exactly is, you know, you know uh, targeting and uh, uh, solving problems the wrong way. So PWD access is also important for, for travel demand man manage, uh, strategy. Uh, street buffering, where we can actually use parking lots to buffer our bicycle lanes to actually the, 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 uh, the, 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 act of the, the moving vehicles and our, our buses. And then we can get into bicycle facility and lane improvements and, and business taxes. 
a business taxis. Okay, so what we're saying is that there are some that are all happening at the same time. Some of them are not too successful because the infra is not there and sometimes the policies are also not there. So may mga konting ano, uh, hindi nagtutugma, kaya nga we need to put more order when we start looking into our projects. And lastly, last slide na yan. Oh, sige, okay. Said another way, inclusive mobility is all for sustainable development is all about planning that puts people, places, and activities together. And it can start at community level. And we need to balance dense, dense development with good public transport system and access to open public places, but by people from all walks of life. So, pagka natuloy man ang project, we are talking about, this is what we want to look at. Fair, trans, fair savings of 18 pesos a day is very important and travel time down to 49 minutes versus 80 minutes if we do nothing. And uh, lastly, inclusive mobility is all about a developed country. Uh, as uh, the mayor of Bogota said, uh, it's a developed country that's not a place where people have, where the poor have cars, which we all want. But it is where the rich can actually ride the transportation, public transportation with us, along with us. And, and, and of course, not to mention, and it's very, very important, is to actually have the rich people walk and bike along with everyone else. And of course, of course, kung magbabakasyon ka naman, eh, pwede ka naman magkotse, di ba? Pwede naman tayo magkotse, hindi naman masamang magkotse. But we actually use, share, and pull our clean vehicles too. So we start getting cleaner and have reduce our carbon footprint uh, over time. And... Uh, Last na lang, actually, thank you. <laughs> what we are, this is a very nice, uh, you know, I got this only from Top Gear last, yet last night. Riding on a jeepney even if you can actually afford a Ferrari. So that's respect. We will try to make sure over time that, that riding public transportation, sana, is the new sexy thing for the rich people in this world and in Metro Manila. So thank you. You can check this uh, Top Gear ng ano, Facebook. So thank you very much for bearing with me. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Annelie. <laughs>